Hello YouTube, here I'm going to be making a requested video. This video was requested by Chris Boley. I'm going to put the link to his channel in the description box below. Anyway, he wanted me to make a quick video on some tips for building a diorama. Now he emphasized that he wanted it to be fairly cheap and what I said is basically the more detail you want to put into a diorama the more money it's going to be so throughout this video just keep that in mind anyway uh, what I'm gonna be showing in this video is basically what I do and I'll give you a couple tips and ideas on other stuff you can try anyway let's start with the diorama box itself uh, the box that I build my dioramas in is a 5 foot by 3 foot wooden box. It sits on two sawhorses. Not exactly sure how high up, and I also forget exactly how deep it is. I can measure it real quick, actually. tape measure out and it's five and a half inches deep but this can obviously vary I had a little assistance building this a few years back um, my neighbor just up the road is a retired carpenter so he has all the tools and whatnot to build this type of stuff but like I was saying you know it can vary. There's a number of different ways you can build a diorama box. That's just what mine is. I also have this big board that's uh, back here, which I painted sky on. Nice little background there. And I'm not going to bother with moving the camera, but it's got a little uh, board of wood that goes along the back to support it. And then I have these two I'll show you one of them. These two little bit smaller boards that are painted blue. That's so that I can position those in different places along the diorama depending on where I want to put them. You know, depending on where the scene is. And I think that adds a more realistic touch for making stop motions. So that's my diorama box. Um, so let's move on to the next thing, dirt. Um, a lot of people are, you know, always question, where can you get dirt? Well, this may not be true for everyone. You know, some people live in a lot more urban areas, but where I live, there's a lot of dirt, and I get my dirt from outside. It's as simple as that. Um, now, I know that... It's best to get mud for a diorama because the equipment will not sink in when the mud dries. It kind of hardens, and then the equipment will not sink in, which is more realistic. Uh, in this box right now is not mud, simply because I was too lazy to empty the box from the last diorama and get mud. Um, but maybe after this diorama, I'll exchange it. Uh, but I don't just take dirt and throw it in here. I do screen it using, um, I think it's called a strainer. I don't know, those things, they're meant for food, but I use one for dirt. And, uh, you know, just make sure all the little rocks are out, and the roots especially, that's pretty unrealistic. Um, and any rocks and roots and stuff you see in right now, I put in afterwards. Anyway, um... As far as scenery, in terms of grass, trees, I buy all my grass and trees at either a hobby store or a craft store. Um, I know the famous brand for making that kind of stuff is uh, Woodland Scenics, but you know there's other brands out there that make the same exact thing. 
Um, but, you know, it is a little expensive, I will admit. Gravel, that's all. Actually, let me show you. The gravel that I use is um, this stuff. It's uh, You can see this made by Woodland Scenics. Uh, it's ballast for uh, train dioramas, but it works just good for for gravel uh, if it's gray um, so that's it for that type of stuff buildings and stuff if you want to get you know like a kit I would recommend getting O scale train buildings I don't know that they make 150th scale buildings if they do obviously uh, my dioramas in 150th scale uh, you know the majority of dioramas are done in 150th scale it's the most common construction scale. So if you're doing 150th scale, O scale for the train buildings would be the closest. Um, you could also just use cardboard, you know, if you want to go for a cheap, cheaper look, you can use cardboard and paint it, whatever. Um, now also what I have in here is the road. Now this is probably the more expensive type of road to make uh, the way I make this, which I'm sure I've mentioned this in a video before, but you take uh, a bit of foam board and you put glue on it. You know, just regular old Elmer's glue. You can also use scenic cement if you want, but I find that Elmer's glue sticks a little bit better. And uh, let me just grab something. So you get some more of this ballast. Uh, this is fine in texture, as opposed to, for gravel, it would be medium. Looks the most to scale. This is 150th I'm talking about, though. Um, you know, you would have to accommodate for different scales. And you get the, the black ballast, and you just pour it on there, and as you can see, it looks fairly like asphalt texture. This is also the most realistic, not necessarily the easiest, but is it going to focus? I don't know. It might not. It's not in a close-up mode. Probably should have put it in that mode, but my bad. Anyway, and this is when you're making a paving stop motion, the most realistic way to do it, because this stuff, you know, it's... I don't know what you would call it, but, you know, before you glue it down, it's, like, loose material. So, it would look like asphalt. You could put it in a dump truck and have it pour into a paver and it looks very realistic and you can have it come out the back of the paver and get spread and rolled the asphalt compactors. So, that's the most realistic way to do that. Um, you know, from there, I have power lines, wooden dowels, and... I don't even know what that string stuff is. It's a different material. I don't know exactly what it is for the, the cross pieces on the power lines. Like that. That's um, uh, balsa wood. Uh, so, you know, use stuff that you have lying around. If you want it to be cheaper, you can always go to hobby stores or craft stores to get materials. They have a ton of stuff. Um... A lot of times they're focused on trains, but you'd be surprised what kind of O-scale train stuff you could find that works with your 150th scale dioramas. Um, a couple little tips uh, in terms of making stop motions. Um, I'm not really going to get into the actual making a stop motion, but in terms of dioramas and stop motions, you know, how they kind of fit together. Lighting really helps. If you have your diorama well lit, that's always nice. I have these big, uh, you know, these big metal lights that you get at Home Depot. I have two of them currently, but I'm planning on uh, getting a third and possibly a fourth before this upcoming diorama. Um... But I'm not going to get into, you know, making a stop motion in terms of pictures and stuff, just in terms of the way your diorama should look. Lighting is always nice. Um, 
And one last tip that really doesn't fit into any other category is something I like to do. Um, you see, I have a lot of gravel on the roadway right now. Well, what I like to use is, hold on. This is an empty can right now. I don't have any full ones, so I gotta go out and buy some. But you can just get these at, you know, Staples, Office Max, any old office store. These little uh, compressed air cans, the duster things, that works really nice if you don't do it too, you know, if you do it lightly, it works really nice to get all the gravel off surfaces that you don't want, you know, the loose dirt on. They're good at cleaning things without making a big mess. Also, you can take a big paintbrush and go in and brush it off and make it look nice. But that's really the best I can do right now. I don't know what more to do. It's just basic diorama building. Um, oh, another thing is my big rock there. It's another thing I got outside, so not only dirt, but you can get rocks outside. But uh, other than that, you know, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them in text. If you really want me to make a, another video on something specific, I can try my best. But other than that, thanks for watching. Sorry that this video is kind of long. Maybe I'll edit some of it out, but that's about it. Thanks, guys. And, uh... Got a couple more videos coming soon.